We are Miss GCH and of all the videos for you to click on I am super excited that you found this one this is a long awaited long anticipated and I know people can say that all the time on YouTube and sometimes maybe they're telling the truth and sometimes they're lying but when I tell you the people have been asking me ever since I posted the Bible study first of all let's start with this so back in November at some point I went and purchased the Bible study uh, workbooks by Zach Wendall and I was super excited about it because they had been like the ad had been stalking me on Instagram and I've been looking for some kind of Bible study or some kind of something that would just really help me to get into the word and so this literally stalked me until I purchased it and I did an unboxing on my channel really just because like I had seen the ad so much that I was like okay I'll just do an unboxing it's cool you guys, not to say that I ever post a video and don't expect it to do well, but I just kind of was really posting for me. And that video now has like over a thousand views. I mean, I think it's like pushing 2,000 views. And I just didn't expect that. Like I remember logging on one day and just checking some of the analytics and uh, stats for my videos. And I saw this one was like jumping in the comments. Like people were like, thank you. I just purchased my all this stuff. And then it had me thinking like Bible study need to be cut me a check because I have gotten them several orders. <laughs> but it's fine. It's not about that. But as a result of that video, everybody was asking like, okay, the unboxing was cool. It was cool to see it. Thanks for your feedback. But we want to know about the content. And I was trying to pick the right time to do this video because I wanted to be able to have something to say. Like I didn't want to just do it after my first week of doing it because I wasn't going to have much to say. So this video is 100% my updated review of the Bible study. I'm going to tell you guys the real, uh, I'm not going to say all the fluffy stuff just because, you know, it's about the Bible. Like I'm going to give you the real, especially for the people who are really like, even before they purchase, they want to know about the content part more so than just how it looks in the unboxing, which I totally understand. So yeah, I have a lot to share with you guys. So we're going to get right into it. And of course, if you like what you see by the end, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you can stick around for my other videos because those are cool too but anyway here we go um, I only have the one book right here with me the other one is in my bookshelf um, in the living room but if you want to see what both of them look like you can go check out my unboxing video if I haven't already linked it I'll link it here um, but yeah they're both about the same size this one is the Old Testament and the black one is the New Testament so okay picking up where I left off with the unboxing I told you guys I loved the way this looked the aesthetic I love that they had so many different like question prompts I loved that each book had like um, context so who the author was the date was um, just kind of helping you orient yourself around each book um, the colors like there was so much that I loved about this book and the fact that it was so big it's like cardstock paper so I could really just go to town writing if I felt like it because I'm if you know me at all I'm long-winded and you know when things come to me I like to have space to write so there was a lot that I really liked about this during the unboxing and I will say just my overall upfront you all I have made it through four books of the Bible um and y'all might not be real phased by that you might just be like okay that's cute sis but you don't understand <laughs> I cannot say, I know for a fact there's probably two or three books of the Bible that I have read from front to back. I've read Song of Solomon front to back, I've read Galatians front to back, and I think Matthew or, or Luke, I think it was Luke, one of those that I read front to back. Shame to say it, but if you want my honest truth, there is no other book of the Bible that I knowingly read from front to back. So, the fact that I am now on the book of Numbers, the fact that I can say I read even three full books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, which we'll get into it, but Leviticus was chall so challenging, <laughs> so challenging. But I'm now on Numbers and like, you guys, it is so exciting, it is so invigorating. It is just like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe it. And the reason I'm super excited about it, and I will give props to the Bible study for this, is how they set it up is that you read a book of the Bible a week. Um, and I think there's pros and cons to that. So in the front cover, it shows you, come on and focus, there we go. It shows you like week one, and then it has like what you're supposed to read for that week. 
so I'm missing one of my check marks but um, for Leviticus but yeah I've been just kind of checking them off as I go so here are my pros and cons around this so for me I like the structure of I know in this week I'm only focusing on this book of the Bible I only have to worry about that context um, I'm building up that part of the story um, because that's one benefit of reading the Bible front to back which I've never done is it really is a story like it builds on itself and so if you jump in at the end there may be some um, key factors of history that you don't really understand because you haven't read that yet um, so reading it as a story y'all it is reading to me like Harry Potter like um, Lord of the Rings it's reading me you know what was another good series another bomb series it's reading me Narnia okay it is just so exciting and some of y'all might think I'm gassing and I'm telling you I was that person who like man as much as I would love being in the word and would love like the way that the Lord would speak to me through the word it was so hard for me to be disciplined it was so hard for me to ever make it through a one-year Bible y'all never made it not once I have bought one year Bibles I have started one year plans on the Bible app and never finished so for me to be talking about this like I'd be excited to grab the Bible like oh what is the tea what is happening next you guys oh my gosh so that has been a pro for me of how they um you know have organized it to doing a book of the Bible per week now here's my downside or it might be a downside for some of you is one year Bibles are usually set up to where they tell you exactly which verses to read so they break it down like every day you read like for example Genesis 1 verse 1 through Genesis 3 verse 18 or something like that and some of them even have you reading multiple books like a portion of multiple books at a time I think that's why I never finished it because why am I jumping all around the Bible why am I only reading it just it was it was almost like two orderly and organized to the point where I felt like if I missed a day that I was just all discombobulated whereas this um so I guess I'm back to the pro of it this is like you know this week is this bible so if I don't make it through all the verses that I wanted to for this particular day I'll just pick up where I left off tomorrow and the goal is to just okay maybe some days you read five chapters and some days you read ten chapters or one day you only have time to read one chapter and you get your revelation from that so for me I feel like the pressure is off with how they organize it but for some people that might be a struggle if you like being told like read this exact amount I don't know if you'll like how this is set up but I'm telling you even if you think like oh I need the exact verses give this a try like I would not not purchase this <laughs> because of the fact that they don't tell you exactly which verses to read I, I wouldn't do that like honestly I've adjusted well to the idea of like week one Genesis get it done however you need to get it done now here's where I think it'll get interesting is because like so for example week 14 they have us reading Psalms and Proverbs and if I google correctly just off of what I know about Psalms like there's a whole Psalm 119 and I'm just thinking Lord isn't Psalm one of the largest books in the Bible if not the largest book in the Bible and they have us reading that and Proverbs together in the same week. I don't know how that's going to work out. So I think that's where I might do some individual adjusting of reading the book from the week before like early so that I can start Psalm early and not like fall behind because that's a lot to cram into one week so I thought it was interesting I wasn't quite sure why they did it like that or why he Zach did it like that but I mean it's whatever um it's not the end of the world I just you know I'll report back when it gets closer to that time um so far I haven't felt like super under pressure to finish I've been reading generally speaking with Genesis let's see it was 46 chapters I think or 48 chapters something, something like that something around there and I was reading about 8 to 10 chapters a day um and if I had like not a lot of time then like Saturday morning or Sunday morning when I knew I had like more time um, I would do more then or if I needed to do not only a morning time but an evening time as well then I would you know just make up wherever I could which motivates me to spend even more time in the word you guys I'm telling you it's like it not that it tricks you but it's just like it makes the Bible the story that it is like the Bible can stand alone the Bible didn't need this but I'm just saying for our generation and people who are really like trying in your best awful humanness 
it is really just helpful and it makes it just exciting to get back into the word and like okay Lord what else are you going to speak because I want to know what else happened in the story so yeah that's my pros and cons about how they set it up as far as your reading plan the big thing I love and I've already mentioned this several times is the context so that is another piece that I think is really helping me get through the Bible is I actually understand I'm not going to sit here and say like I am now a bishop you know and I can just you know spill off at the tongue verses and memorized all the things no but the general story and like even some of the nuances and how this connects to that and like I was just like oh my gosh the context so even like I went to a Christian school I don't like to talk about it because it's a very awful experience but I went to a Christian school for two years of middle school and so I knew that the first five books uh, were the Torah and like just some of that general information um, but I love like this page. I love how it breaks it down like the Old Testament and it gives you how everything is broken up. So right now I'm in the Torah about to finish up the Torah very soon in the next uh, about week or so. Um, but it gives you dates. It gives you how many books. It gives you the authors like it's really it's really fire. So then Genesis. I love how like I told you all. Each one starts with each book, um, so each new week has whatever book you're reading and it gives you so much context and nothing that's too deep. Like I said, it gives you the author, so Moses, um, and I was like, whoa, didn't know <laughs> Moses wrote Genesis. Okay, that's cool. And if you're out there and you're a mega Christian and you know all this already, okay, don't judge me that I was a church kid and I didn't know this stuff. I'm just telling you, there's so much stuff that I'm like, wow, didn't know that. Having the date, what was going on at that time, um, even it says the audience, so Genesis was written to God's chosen people, the Israelites, um, they were in slavery for 400 years, so their entire history has been wiped out and they were force fed Egyptian history instead. It says reason, Moses teaches them their heritage and redirects their view of who God really is. The theme, creation, the flood, the patriarchs, and God's plan of redemption. It's got a key verse in there. It's got sections, so it tells you chapters 1 and 2 is creation, chapters 3 and 5 is the fall, um, chapters 6 through 10 is the flood, chapters 11 through 20 Abraham, 21 through 26 are Isaac, 27 through 36 is Jacob, and 37 through 50 is Joseph. And it's got key words for you to pay attention to, covenant, bless, sin, and God said. So like, already before I read it, I was like, wow, I'm not just picking up Genesis and like, here we go. You know, I have context, I know what to look for. I know like, okay, this is how this makes sense. Like this is how this led to this. Okay, like you just, you're oriented around what the heck you're about to read. And it's really great, it has been so helpful. It's made me wanna really look forward to like, okay, what's really about to come next? So yeah guys, as you can see, I have written Oh my gosh, this late. Okay, you see I have written, like it has you writing out um, creation, what happened each day, which is another thing that I will shamelessly say, I don't know if I could have told you and recited what was created on which day. I, I could tell you what was created overall, but I couldn't tell you. Um, and so a lot of times I'll make my own notes too. Like I have some notes like up here or I'll highlight. Yeah, I just be going to town you guys. And if I have Bible notes, like I like to write inside of my Bible. But if I have stuff that I feel like applies to what I'm answering or what, what they're writing about already in here, then I'll just write my notes on here. Um, sometimes in the margins or things like that. So that's another thing when you're reading the Bible. Sometimes your eyes glaze over. That is literally part of my prayer as part of this Bible study. It's like, Lord, what, while I read, help my eyes not to glaze over. You know when I really pray that? Leviticus. Because if you know, Leviticus is all 613 laws. And uh, when Moses was given all these laws by God, First of all, how to build a tabernacle, then all the different offerings, all the different feasts they gotta keep. And if so and so kick their neighbor, then they gotta bring a bull to the temple and you gotta burn it this way, and you gotta do it like that. And it was a whole bunch of repetition. Your girl was reading this like, Lord, I think I get the point. But I still read it. I did. My eyes glazed over a few times, but I still read it. And then it has a final thoughts page um, at the end of each week. So it kind of helps you summarize, what did you read? What did you gather from this week? Because that's an important part of learning that I know just from college. If you read something and you can't say it back to somebody or you can't make sense of what you read, then you really didn't retain anything. So I love the final thoughts because it helps me to think back and look back at my notes and say like, okay, wow, this is the context. This is what I got out of this week. So the format that they have, you guys, honestly, is super dope. Now here's another little 
little caveat. Again, not necessarily cons. Not necessarily. But another little caveat that I uh, discovered, and I actually didn't even discover it until Leviticus, that I think they intend for you to read the book and then go and do the workbook um, like uh, prompts for the week. So essentially I would read the context, I would go read the entire book, and then I would come back and do like the exercises that are in here. That's not how I roll, really. That's not how I, like I like to write while I'm reading so that I know what I read. Like if I just went through and had to just read the whole book and then come back and write, like what if I had something really good I wanted to say for this question, but now I forgot it because I read that five days ago you know I don't like that um and the reason I picked it out is because for Leviticus I think it was yes on the very first page um the first page of like the exercises it says in five words what are your preconceived thoughts on Leviticus before you read it this week and then it has right under it the next question says did your views change at all after diving into the book how and I was like so you're asking me a question that I would only be able to answer if I read the entire book or had read at least most of the book. So um, that's a little caveat and what I do for that, I just do the workbook while I read. Um, now the reason why I said this is a little bit of a caveat is because um, it's interesting what they decided to pull out and I keep saying they. Zach, um, the author. And I get it, if they had gone like toe to toe with like every little thing that happened in the Bible, this book would be, you know, five times this size. So I get it. But there's times where I'm like, that was kind of a major thing. And it's not in there for me to write about. So thankfully, they have given us all this. Let me see if I can find a place to show you. Yeah, like this. Uh, Well, let me find one where I actually did what I'm talking about. Yes, like this. So they've given us a ton of focus. There we go. They've given us a ton of white space just of how they've designed the book up in the top margin. So all of this that I wrote here, and I've done it several other times, and even here, this was not a question. Come on and focus. There we go. This down here was not a question. That was just empty white space. And I filled it up with my notes because it was like, okay, he's not going to talk about it, prompt me about it. But this is something that I feel like the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. Holy Spirit wants to make sure I catch. Well, I'm going to write it down somewhere in this book. The other side of that also, though, is if I'm following along while reading, um, sometimes I'll get to the next question and it's something that I haven't read yet. So I just kind of stop there and keep reading. But then there's times where all I'm doing is reading that day because it never hits the point where the next question is. So sometimes it, it feels a little, um, it feels a little jumpy, you know? It feels like, okay, we're asking questions about this and now we're asking questions about this and it, it, it doesn't always feel fluid. So I just kind of fill in the gaps of what I feel like are the gaps in the margins and just kind of write my own notes and also write in my Bible. Now I will get to probably my harshest critique out of all of this. Um, and I don't feel like I've been super harsh. But yeah, this one is a tough one. And I don't know if there's a way around it. But anyways, just say it, baby. Okay, so there are times when I feel like the questions are more like, this only happens like once or twice each week during each of the sections. I feel like the questions are a bit of a stream of consciousness, maybe, question. <laughs> because I'll read it and I'm like, what are you asking? Like, I have a few examples of that. Um, let me see if I can find one. So this was one. Um, so it was around the time of Ten Commandments. Let me read. And then it asked us, it said, based on what Jesus said about the Ten Commandments in Matthew 5. First of all, so this is, we're in, what, what, uh, okay, this was Exodus. So in Exodus, it says, based on what Jesus said about the Ten Commandments in Matthew 5. So already when I'm reading this, I was kind of confused because I'm like, Matthew 5, I'm reading Exodus, Matthew's in the New Testament, how would I, okay. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I had to change my battery. But, okay. So it was saying, based on what Jesus said about the Ten Commandments in Matthew 5, how can you look at each of them through the lens of the New Testament? Hint, some can remain the same. understand that like I literally read that 10 times 
So you want me to look at each of the Ten Commandments and see how they change in the New Testament based on Matthew 5. Then I went to read Matthew 5 and I had I saw no connect no no clear connection to the Ten Commandments. Maybe it maybe the problem is me, okay? But I was I was real confused. I did not know what he was trying to ask us. I did not know. And I even wrote in here, honestly confused by this question, <laughs> but make me know of how each is represented in the New Testament. So instead of doing what he asked us to do, because I was mad confused and I was not going to spend no more hours uh, trying to figure it out, really minutes, um, I just went through and I actually found this on Google. Um, which is what happens typically when I'm confused by his questions. I go and do some research to try to find some way to answer the question. Um, so I researched how each of the um, Ten Commandments in the Old Testament were either represented um, or how they show up in the New Testament. Don't think that was what he was asking. And to this day, I still don't really know. I don't. But I went through, there was somebody had already made a chart like that on Google. So I just went through and wrote down the um the references for like old and new for each of the ten commandments that he had listed and that's how i chose to answer it um and that is not the only time that that has happened you guys i wish i could say that but even okay so this one i think maybe what's happening here is that he's writing from the perspective of somebody who's already read the whole bible but if you really did write this for people to do bible study and everything is in order I can't say a whole bunch about what is happening in the future as far as in hard detail because I haven't read those books yet. So he asked us, this was in Numbers. I actually did this one today, I think. Um, and it said, what role does the tribe of Judah play in the future of Israel? Okay, so I had to go Google that and say, what was the significance of the tribe of Judah? Because at this point, unless my eyes glazed over, Lord, I don't know if it has been clarified why the tribe of Judah is important. I don't know. Um, so, but when I did research it, it jogged my memory about some things I read. You know, I was able to formulate an answer. But that's just an example for you guys of sometimes, like, the questions sound like maybe what he, like, he read that and understood what he was trying to ask. But the average person might not know what he's talking about um and my english teacher used to always say in high school write to be read and so i always think like that when i'm writing and then i think like that when i'm reading other people's things like okay what you said makes sense is a question somewhere in the world and you could probably answer this question right off the bat but somebody who just picks up your book and is just going through this i what what are you asking <laughs> I don't know so that has happened I will say that has happened probably if I could say three or four times and that's over the course of four the four books that I've read and the four full weeks of questions prompts and everything most of the stuff is really straightforward it's really good stuff that makes you think I don't actually mind having to go and do a google search here and there or um really you know do some research to understand how to answer the question because it makes me feel like oh I really understand even more like I went even deeper um, you can see, you know, how other scholars or Bible scholars, whoever have, you know, looked at these same, um, characters of the Bible or portions of the Bible and you just get deeper meaning and understanding. You can say something a little deeper about it. So I don't mind having to do that. Um, but yeah, I just thought I, I would be fair because I don't want anybody else to get this and get to that point and be like, am I, is it me? Am I the dumb one? And it's like, no, nah, because listen, I felt like the dumb one. Like, Lord, is it me? <laughs> what am I missing here? But my overall thoughts so far, like I said, I'm only four, almost four books in, which let me take that only off because y'all, I'm four books into the Bible, okay? In a row. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, and something really cool off of that, y'all. I know I'm talking your face off, but like, man, I've been calling my mom, um, and my mom is like, whew, child, she be knowing. She went through discipleship, discipleship, discipleship um, when she was coming up. So she really understands the Bible. She's read through it multiple times. And I love how we can have a conversation. Like, I bring this up, and I'm like, Mom, so and so did this. And like, the Israelites on that one part when it was like, mom that's crazy and this happened this happened she's like yeah and i was like i didn't realize that that's what that meant she's like yeah and i'm like oh this is tight like it honestly guys is so exciting it is so exciting because this is what i have always 
always, always, always been asking for, have been trying for, and just failing. Um, and I will say too, in all honesty, I give props to the Bible study, but discipline and consistency is the only way you're going to see the results that you really want to see. And so what's different this year is I actually, for the first time, have done the Daniel Fast. Um, I did it along with Transformation Church and several other churches um, around the U.S., but I was inspired to do it through them and just feeling like I've always known about the Daniel Fast. My mom has done it every year and my dad every year during this time, but I was always like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, y'all got that. Um, and I'll do a whole separate video on my Daniel Fast experience and all that, but I will say that um, doing the Daniel Fast, having that discipline in one area bled into so many other areas. And so I do the Bible study. I wake up at 6 30 every morning I know that's crazy if you would have told me even two months ago even a month ago that I was gonna be waking up at 6 30 every day I would have laughed at you okay okay I, that's not my ministry but um uh, and I and I struggle to even do it myself so my dad gets up around six something every day and so he gives me my wake-up call and you might laugh at me but honestly it works it gets me up out the bed because he is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at 6 30 in the morning and I'm like hmm, hello um but I get up out the bed and I go tell myself like baby you know the benefits of this if you start your day with this if you go full force and get some reading in ask the Lord to speak to you there's no distraction it wakes me up you guys Guys, like I just feel like my mind is so clear and open and ready to hear so that on top of this is just like it's like the golden it's just it's just the golden ticket it's just it's good um I will also plug as well my bible I don't know if I've ever plugged my bible on here I know I have on my testimony video from years ago but I have the Everyday Life Bible by Joyce Meyer it's um written in Amplified so it's an Amplified Bible but you guys, I have had this Bible, somebody bought it for me, my cousin bought it for me actually, for my high school graduation. And this Bible, when I tell you it gives, to me it's like the Bible version of the Bible study. Like I would almost venture to say that the reason I have so much clarity and so much, oh my gosh, is the two of these together. I'm not shading your Bible. I'm not saying you can't do it with your Bible. You absolutely can but Joyce has been very intentional about she has like um life points I think is what she calls them throughout so she'll pull out like while you're reading come on and focus so while you're reading she'll point out and almost do like a little devotional about maybe a verse or a set of verses um to give it even more like life application and context for what you're reading. I'll highlight and stuff and write in the margins here. A lot of times it's like boom, yes, or star and stuff. Um, so I'll do that there, which gives me even more context and things to say in the Bible study uh, little portions. And y'all, the two together, I'm telling you. <laughs> the two together are a win. And they have just been getting me through and um yeah i'm really excited so all that to say uh that's my official i think that's everything i want to say i hope that's everything i want to say um do i still recommend the bible study after i've actually used it and have been through almost four books absolutely um absolutely <laughs> absolutely definitely go for it like there's tons of room it's not super stringent there's room for you to do and read and apply as you will um I even had to get over the idea that I had to answer the questions correctly like I was just open to whatever the spirit was going to say to me while I was reading and then I write that down or I respond in a way that I feel led to respond like it's not about it being right like I've been in school all of my life you guys you all know this so I would have the pressure of like, oh, I need to find the right answer. And the Holy Spirit was like, dude, just write. I'm like, okay, got it. Cool, cool. So um, definitely recommend the Bible study. Definitely super excited and invigorated to continue doing this. Um, and if you're interested in how the Daniel Fast played a role in all of this, make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell on because I think I will drop that uh, video. I have to look back at my schedule, but I know it's on my schedule to be posted um, either next week or sometime in the next few weeks. I really think it's next week. So if you're interested in that, again, make sure you're subscribed. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your love on the original video. 
I mean, hey, Zach Wendell even saw my post and like shouted me out on Instagram, not on his actual feed, of course. <laughs> but he hit me back and was like, hey, that's dope. And I was like, or he said something like, let's go. If I had the screenshot, I'll put it in there. But um, yeah, I'm super excited about this, guys. And I just love what God is doing through it and the clarity I'm getting, the context I'm getting, and how I can speak the word and listen for it more clearly in, when I hear sermons. And I was watching something from T.D. Jakes and something from Pastor Michael Todd. And I'm like, yeah, because yeah that makes sense because this and this already off of what I read um so it's just exciting I'm super excited if you can't tell it's just yeah this is dope and I would love for you to join me on this also final shameless plug I feel like this video is 50,000 million 11,000 I'm so sorry but anyways this is what y'all asked for so but the last thing I want to plug is that my blog uh I plugged this in the last video I think but my blog is not dead actually my blog got a little bit of a not a remodel because I kept the same format but I re-updated it um re -up I updated it and um one thing that I plan to do is start doing a weekly not review but a summary of like what the Lord is speaking to me through each book that I read um so I do have a faith tab on my website on my blog if you've already been following the blog you already know about that so on there I will kind of introduce that I'm going to do this I'll you know put a little plug about the Bible study and um then I will go through and each week I'll probably do a couple of the first few weeks since I'm already I'll be five books in by the time I start posting these but um yeah I plan to just kind of do uh, this is what God has speak to me. This is what I got out of the book of Genesis. This is what I got out the book of Leviticus, um, etc. You know, and just kind of go through like that. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out my blog. Um, I have a subscription option, so go ahead and subscribe if you feel so led, if you want um, updates about when I post these things. But I'm super excited. Just keep me in your prayers, you guys, because I really feel like God is just pushing me in this area. And I don't necessarily know why, but I know that something's going to come out of this. And I really want to be able to share my heart with you all, um, my face with you all, because that's really the thing that's grounding me and has gotten me into this point. So, woo! All that talking, all that said, lots to be said, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to drop me a comment down below and let me know. If you bought it already, let me know. If you started it, let me know when you started, especially if we're on the same schedule-ish, because that'll be fun um, to kind of bounce around ideas. So let me know. And um, yeah, before this video gets any longer, uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> I will see you in the next video. Bye.